Before we start, I'd like to acknowledge the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, the traditional owners of the land that we make this podcast. And I extend that respect to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people that are listening to this episode. Yama. Hello, I'm Raddy Walden, and this is Talking Frank, the Strip Down. Today, I'm going to give you the full rundown on what STIs are and how to treat them. In this week's main episode, you would have caught my chat with Jack Miller from Married at First Sight, as well as our Family Planning Australia doctor, Dr. Claire Bormer. The sense then that you're not clean is a really challenging thing and adds to the stigma and adds to the shame that someone might feel when actually these things are really common Mm. and they're not, usually the shame far outweighs the medical consequences of those particular infections. If you missed this episode, scroll back a bit and have a listen. All right, now it's time to get into the takeaways from this week's app. Number one, let's be clear about what an STI is. STI stands for sexually transmissible infection. So as the name suggests, they're infections that are passed on from one person to another during any sexual activities that involve direct skin-to-skin contact and or the exchange of bodily fluids. STIs can be bacterial, viral or parasitic – And I know that sounds pretty intense, but keep in mind that all of them are treatable and most of them are curable. Now, you've probably heard of chlamydia, but did you know that it's the most common notifiable STI in Australia? It's also, along with gonorrhea and herpes, the most common STI in people under 30. It doesn't matter who you are, your age, your sexuality, your hair colour or your coffee order. Anyone can get an STI. It just takes one unprotected hookup. And the thing is, STIs often have no symptoms, so you may not know if you or your partner has one. The only way to know if you have an STI is to get a sexual health check and get them regularly. Number two, know when it's time to test. If you're sexually active, you should get sexual health checks every six to 12 months, even if you're having safe, protected sex. It's also a good idea to get an STI test if you notice any symptoms like lumps, bumps or mysterious rashes. Also, if you've had unprotected sex, if you've started a new relationship, if your partner's been diagnosed with an STI, or if you've decided to stop using condoms with a regular partner, basically any time something in your sex life changes. Remember that if left untreated, some STIs can cause damage to the body and lead to health problems such as chronic pain and infertility. Number three, what does an STI test involve? While the thought of getting an STI test may make some of you nervous, there's absolutely no need to worry. STI testing is easy, confidential and free or low of cost. I suggest asking about the cost when you make an appointment, just so you're not blindsided on the day. There are a bunch of different places that you can go and get tested. Just go with what's most comfortable and convenient for you. You can get an STI test at your local GP, family planning or sexual health clinic, Aboriginal community controlled health service or multicultural health centre. Once you're there, the doctor or nurse will ask you some pretty standard questions. While some of the questions may seem personal, it's important to be open and honest in your answers. This will allow you to receive the right test and advice specific to you. Also, they're trained to keep you healthy, never to judge. So they'll likely ask about your general health, your sexual history, such as your sexual activities and maybe any previous STIs you've had, any signs or symptoms you've experienced, and whether or not you're taking medications. And based on your answers, they'll run some tests. This could include a urine test, so just peeing in a cup, a blood test, a swab from the back of your throat, inside your vagina or anus, or the tip of the penis, a swab from a sore or blister if you have one, or an examination, which is only recommended if you have symptoms. And then if your results come back positive, meaning that you've got an STI, it's in no way the end of the world. Your doctor or nurse will tell you what kind of treatment you need, And as I mentioned earlier, most types of STIs are curable and all of them are treatable. And one final thing, if you're feeling nervous about going for an STI test, feel free to take a friend along with you. And there are the stripped down facts about STIs. If you want more information, you can go to frank.org.au, give the Family Planning Australia talk line a call, or there's even a few cheeky extra bits of information in the show notes below. Hooroo.